Good morning, muscles! It's Mr. Fallon. Today's Wednesday, and welcome to Good Morning Muscles. It's your daily Kickstarter for what's going to be an amazing day. Uh, Good Morning Muscles is uploaded on It's Mr. Fallon's YouTube page every morning, 6 a.m. As soon as you wake up, get up, find Good Morning Muscles, do it. And just get ready to get so much stronger. Alrighty, I'm pumped. Alright, it's time to get warmed up. And today, we are doing a hustle warm up. This is how we do it. We're going to take our shoe box. And we're going to take our shoe box and stand it on its side right here. And then you're going to take three giant steps. One, two, three giant steps, and you're going to put your jug down right there. Now we're going to start at the shoe box. Mr. Fallon's going to give you a number. I'm going to give you a movement. You're going to see if you can hustle and beat Mr. Fallon. Your first movement is going to be jogging. Your number you're going to try to get to is going to be 30. Are you ready? Touch your shoe box. As soon as we touch that jug, it's going to be number one. We're trying to get to 30. Can you beat Mr. Fallon? Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 29 and hustle 30. Wow, how'd you do? All right, our second hustle warm up is going to be galloping. Your number you're going to try to get to is going to be 18. Keep one foot in front. On your mark, get that hustle. One, two, uh oh, Mr. Ball just fell down. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we're going to eighteen, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. How'd you do? All right, our next movement is going to be sliding. Our score we're going to try to get to is going to be 22. Sliding. Ready, set, go. Hustle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Five, 
Don't let your toes touch the ground. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. How'd you do? All right, final one. It's going to be running as fast as you can. Our score we're going to try to get to is going to be 30. Are you ready, muscle? Come on, let's get strong. We're going for 30. As fast as you can. Ready, set, muscle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, halfway there, 16, 17, keep going, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, two more, 29, and 30. Wow, great work, muscle, so strong. That made him persevere, and he eventually posted an average of 20 points per game by the end of school. In 1981, a fully grown 6'6 six six Michael Jordan won a basketball scholarship to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. While studying cultural geography, he became a leader on the school's team and sank the game-winning basket to take the 1982 NCAA championship against Patrick Ewing and his Georgetown Hoyas. Jordan's rise to the top continued. After being named the NCAA College Player of the Year two seasons in a row, he won a gold medal for the time for spot run story time we're reading wayside school gets a little stranger while we spot run so get up get spot running we're on chapter 22 it's about jane smith i found jane smith jason told stephen the next morning when he got to school you better tell Dee Dee," said stephen they hurried across the playground a whistle blew no running, ordered Mr. Lewis, the professional playground supervisor. Now I want both of you to go back to the edge of the blacktop and walk this time. The boys went back the way they came, then came back the way they went. Dee Dee was sitting on a bench. She had been benched by Mr. Lewis for excessive noise making. I found Jane Smith, Jason whispered as he walked past her. Dee Dee and Jason entered the classroom together. Mrs. Rizal was seated behind her desk. As they passed in front of her, Dee Dee stopped and said, Did you have a nice time at the dentist yesterday, Jason? Yes, Dee Dee, said Jason. It was very nice. I wonder if we have the same dentist, said Dee Dee. What is your dentist's name? Her name is Dr. Payne, said Jason. But that hasn't always been her name. It hasn't, asked Dee Dee. Oh, no, said Jason. Before she was married, her name was Jane Smith. Jane Smith, asked Dee Dee. Is it spelled J-A-N-E-S-M-I-T-H? Yes, that's how you spell Jane Smith, said Jason. But like I said, 
That's not her name anymore. Her name is Dr. Payne. She works at the dentist's office at 124 Garden Street. They took their seats. Late that afternoon, Dr. Payne finished working, finished work, and walked out of her office. It had been a good day. She had drilled 25 teeth. She made $60 for every tooth she drilled. 25 times 60 is $1,500. Not bad for a day's work. Of course, not all the teeth really had cavities, but how would any of her patients find out? Mm, that's not very nice. She got into her fancy silver and black sports car and drove away. She sang along with the radio. She didn't even notice the old beat-up green station wagon in her rearview mirror. She lived in a mansion next to the lake. There was a stone wall around the house. She pressed a button in her car and an iron gate opened. The gate closed behind her as she headed up the long, winding driveway. A moment later, the old green station wagon stopped and parked next to the gate. A woman got out, walked around to the back, and opened the tailgate. She pulled out a ladder. She set the ladder up against the wall. Under her arm, she carried an old blue notebook. Dr. Payne's butler handed her a drink. The cook was making dinner. Dr. Payne's dog, cat, and husband were waiting for her in the den. Her dog's name was Brussels. Her cat's name was Sprouts. She petted them both. Her husband's name was Sam. She petted him, too. Hi, darling. How was your day, he asked. I made $1,500, said Jane. They hugged and kissed. They loved each other, but they loved money even more. Then they had dinner by candlelight as they watched the sun set over the lake. After dinner, they sat out on the deck under the stars. Sprouts lay purring on Jane's lap. Russell sat faithfully by her side. Life was perfect. I love you, darling, she said, petting Sprouts. And I love you, too, said Sam. I was talking to the cat, said Jane. The butler stepped out onto the deck. Excuse me, madame, he said, but there's an elderly woman out in the yard. Jane's long fingernails dug into her cat's neck. I wonder how she got past the gate, said Sam. I don't know, sir, said the butler. She's probably hungry. Perhaps I can give her some leftover. No, shouted Jane. Get rid of her. Let me have a look, said Sam. He followed the butler back into the house. He returned a moment later. Darling, you'll never guess who's here. One of your former teachers. Isn't that just the sweetest? Jane screamed. She jumped to her feet. Sprouts flew off of her lap and into the hot tub. What's wrong, asked Sam. I told you to get rid of her. She kicked her dog out of the way, then climbed over the railing and jumped off the deck to the ground 15 feet below. Mrs. Drizel came out onto the deck. You can't get away from me, young lady, she hollered. Jane hurt her ankle pretty bad when she hit the ground. It was either sprained or broken. She lay on the ground in agony as she looked up at her former teachers. You have to do homework, said Mrs. Drizel, looking down at her. Jane's face twisted in pain. Rub a monkey's tummy, she shouted, then struggled to her feet. She had a suitcase stashed in the boathouse just in case this ever happened. She hobbled to it, grabbed it, and limped down to the lake, dragging her suitcase behind her. Mrs. Drizel hurried down the steps on the side of the deck. Jane groaned as she threw her suitcase into the motorboat. Then she pulled herself aboard and started the engine. Darling, come back, Sam shouted from the deck as he watched the boat sputter across the water. Mrs. Drizel climbed into an old rowboat. I'll find you, Jane Smith, she shouted into the darkness. You can run, but you can't hide. Jane's voice echoed back across the black water. Rub a monkey's tummy with your 
and neither of them was ever seen again. Boys and girls, our steps for today. Tomorrow on Good Morning Muscles, we're going to learn all about ears. I don't know what that's about. Boys and girls, have you ever wanted to be a phys ed teacher? It's a lot of fun. If you want to be a phys ed teacher, just send, um, send us a video of you telling everybody in the world what exercise you want them doing and how to do it. You could be a star and a phys ed teacher. So fun. Do it. Hey, it's game time. Get some. All right. For game time today, we are working on softball pitching. Remember this week we've been working on baseball, softball, t-ball skills. So far, Monday, Tuesday, we worked on some fielding skills. Today, we're going to work on some softball pitching. Now, boys and girls, if you want to know how to do baseball pitching, I think if you tune back to episode 4, we worked on baseball pitching. So I thought today we'd work on some softball pitching. What you're going to need today is you're going to need your shoebox, and you're going to need, oh, I want to use this ball, our tape ball today, not the ball that bounces. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to take your shoebox and put your shoebox on a chair like this. And if you remember when we did this with baseball, that's our strike zone. We're going to try to pitch our ball right into the box. Now, when you play baseball or softball, the pitcher is the person that throws or in softball tosses the ball to the batter and they try to hit it. The pitcher tries to make it so the batter can not hit the ball. That's the pitcher's challenge and the batter's challenge is to hit the ball. Today we're going to work on softball pitching. Now when you pitch, this is the way it's going to look. Face your uh, box or strike zone. And you're going to start off with your hands by your side. Right now I'm going to demonstrate looking at the camera. So I'm not going to use the box. So my hands are by my side. To start off with, I'm going to bring my hands up just like this. Okay, from here. I'm going to bring the ball back, and then bring it all the way around, step, and pitch. And when you do it in softball, it's a toss. Step and pitch. And notice how this hand will point where I'm going. Watch again. Hands are by my side. Bring it up. We're going back, and then all the way around, step and pitch. One more time. Bring it here. We're going back, step, and pitch. Just like that. Now we're going to try to do it with the box. So here's my box. Hands are by my side. Bring it in front. Bring it back. All the way around, step, and pitch. Right into the box. If you make it in the box, what is it? It's a strike. Let's try that again. Mr. Fallon got a strike. I wonder if you got a strike. We're going again. Hands by our side, bring it up, take it back, all the way around, step and pitch. Mr. Ballin got another strike. Did you get another strike? If you're getting a little better, you can try to do it from a little bit further back. Let's try again. Hands by our side, bring it up, take it back, all the way around, step and pitch. Here we go again, bring it up, take it back, all the way around, step and pitch. Up, back, all the way around, step and pitch. This is how you do windmill pitching in softball. So good. As you're getting better, you can try to do it further back. You can even try to do it harder. Up, take it back. All the way around, step and pitch. All right, our batter's up. How many strikes do we need to get to get the batter out? We need three strikes. Mr. Fallon's going to see if we can get three strikes on the batter. All right, 
First one, up, back, all the way around, step the pitch. Oh, it's a strike. That's strike one. Up, back, all the way around, strike two. All right, if we get one more, we're going to strike the batter out. Let's see. Bring it up. Take it back. All the way around, step the pitch. Oh, Mr. Fallon missed. What's it called if it doesn't go in the strike zone? Then it's a ball. How many balls are you allowed to have? If you have four balls, then the person gets to go to first base for free. All right, so right now we have one ball and two strikes. Let's see. Bring it up. Take it back. All the way around, step the pitch. Oh, and we struck the batter out. That's three strikes. Boys and girls, I encourage you to practice this all day long. You could try to go further back. You could try to pitch harder. You could even have somebody else try to catch it when you pitch it. So much fun. Okay, what animal is always at a baseball or softball game? A bat! <laughs> <laughs> Boys and girls, good work today. You worked hard. Nice hustle, warm up. We did some nice dancing. That wiper dance, so much fun. Um, we had some nice softball pitching. Maybe you've never done that before. Mr. Fallon hasn't done much softball pitching before. I thought it was a lot of fun. Boys and girls, here's what we have coming up in these next couple days. Uh, tomorrow on Good Morning Muscles, we're going to work on some batting in baseball or softball or t-ball. We're going to do it inside. Parents, we're going to keep it safe. So make sure you're here for that. We're going to continue learning about Michael Jordan. And um, next week, and Good Morning Muscles, we're going to be starting our Spring Fitness Challenge. So let's make sure we're working hard so we're all prepared for that. This weekend, Mr. Fallon's going to be trying a special challenge that will hopefully inspire you to do your best. Boys and girls, thanks for joining us on Good Morning Muscles. Keep working ha hard. Have an awesome day. We'll see you tomorrow. Muscles! Muscles! Muscles!